Hey everybody, it is Zoe from Sugar Street Studios, the home of awesome cake art where I share with you uh, some of the cakes that I make, plus I share my tips and tricks along the way just to get the best out of your cakes. On today's show, we're going to be picking up on part four of our series on cake textures. We've already covered grass effects, wood effects, stone effects. If you haven't seen those tutorials, what are you waiting for? Check those out wherever I put my little thing. Uh, but in today's program, I'm going to show you three techniques for creating fur. If you're new here, consider subscribing. It's pretty fun, you know. Uh, I share a lot of different artistic techniques which we can throw onto cakes and just, we have a lot of fun with cake design. So hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you. So I'm gonna share with you Three tips, my three tips for creating fur. There are so many different types of fur out there. Curly fur, long fur, short fur, uh, knotted fur, pattern fur, there's so much. But I've just taken three for today's tutorial. We are going to look at long fur. This is great for sculpted dog cakes, uh, teddy bear cakes. It's a good generic, all round, all purpose kind of fur. The second that I'm gonna show you is a short fur. This is the kind of fur that you'd probably see on a cat or, or a fox, much, much finer. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little time consuming, but when you get it right, oh, it looks awesome. And the third technique I'm gonna show you with no stencils and no airbrush, just you and a brush and a few colors, is a patterned fur, and we're going to go with, you guessed it, the daddy meow, leopard print. Everyone needs to know how to knock out a good leopard print, so I'm going to share my tips for doing that. So, let's get on with it, shall we? So for our long fur, I am starting with a nice sort of teddy bear base brown colour, and you want to roll the paste relatively thickly because we're going to get in there with the detail. That is a scallop tool and I am using that, which I'm twisting in my hands as I'm creating those long curved shapes. And the reason for that is because I want the paste to lift so that I add dimension to the texture. And all I'm doing is I'm going through the paste, keeping my, my, my waves of fur in the same direction. I'm now going in and I'm creating tiny little curls or flicks using the end of my scallop tool to dig and scoop up little bits of the paste to make it seem as though there's quite a lot of movement going in. Once you are happy and you have textured your paste, you want to go ahead and add some extra color. So in here I have petal dusts, which I have watered down, not with water, but with vodka to create a very weak paint. I've used two tones of brown and I'm starting with the lighter brown. You can see that I am, it's quite a watery mix and I'm doing that intentionally so that the colors run and bleed into each other and create a more natural effect. What I'm aiming to do is layer up the color so that the deeper, darker, stronger colors go down in the depths of that textured fur to help create a, a relief, if you like, of, of color. And you just wanna build it up in that way until you are happy with it. And once it's dry, you'll get a really, really good effect. For my short fur, I'm starting with an ivory base color. And uh, we're going to dry dust over the top of this. So I'm using cream ochre tiny bit of terracotta, brown and black. Those are the colors that I am using. And what I want to do is I want to build up some very subtle stripes, some graduation of color. I'm starting with the creamier, more caramelly tones, and you can see I'm mixing my dust. I'm not using them straight. And once I am happy with that, um, because I'm gonna go for a sort of wolf type fur, I'm going to introduce some gray. So I'm just gonna powder in a little bit of black with the cream here and you'll see that I'm carrying on in the same direction adding stripes. Um, what I'm aiming for is that lovely gradation of colour that you get on, on fur where you see the creamy base into grey into brown um, and that's what's going to add real interest underneath 
the texturing. If you're not sure, do yourself a favor and go and have a look at some images of fur online so you can see the color and the pattern. And finally, I'm going in slightly darker with black and brown and just really making those, uh, those colors pop. Using the fine end of a Dresden tool, now you begin to texture. Very short, sharp, slightly curved lines. This is a labor of love, ladies and gents, but it really is worth it. And where we've laid up that lovely color uh, underneath, you will begin to create a realism in the, in, the, in the fur and that will create a real interest. What you do want to do is, if, depending on the type of cake that you're making, is to part the fur. So if you can see where we've got that central gray line on the right hand side, all of my fur is slightly moving to the right. And on the left hand side, all of my fur strokes are slightly moving to the left. And once you have done that, then just go back in and tweak with the end of the Dresden just to pull up some of those little fur tips. And it's a really effective, effective uh, use of the Dresden, I think this one. So leopard print, you want to start with an ivory base color and I'm using a clean sterilized nail brush to create a little bit of texture. Now I have used a terracotta and ochre petal dust mixed together with some vodka to create a very weak paint wash. Now if you have a look at leopard print, you will see that it's not even. So you want to recreate that when you're coloring your paste. So you want to create some darker areas and some lighter areas. The darker area, imagine being like the back of your leopard. So that will be, that will concentrate in where the focal point is going to be. So it, for my little sample here, it's going to be in the middle. Now leave that to fully dry before you go in with the dust. So I've used a mixture of uh, brown dust, you can see the colours that I've used there, and I am just using that brush to rub in and go over the top. Now the reason that I've switched to a dry dust is because I want it to pick up the texturing that we did before. It's a sort of two-tone effect and it, it just really helps bring it to life. Now for the spots. So I'm creating a paint again with my brown ochre and terracotta have all been mixed in there and you're creating big spots and little spots. Big spots as a general rule of thumb on the lighter areas of, uh, the, of the fur and smaller spots in the darker areas of the fur, okay? Because if you look at their patination, it does change. So you want to recreate that. Once your spots are in, in place, you want to create those sort of telltale markings, swap to a finer brush. I have a uh, black and brown paint mixed up, not too watery, I want it quite thick. And what I'm doing is round the bigger areas, I'm creating they're like, almost like a sort of little cupped C shape in thirds around the bigger areas. But you will see that it's not possible to do that around the smaller circles. So you might just have one or two little C shapes around those. In between, you want to add some little spots with that darker color, concentrating them more towards the middle. So you can see how we've gone from bigger grading down towards the middle and then just infilling don't go crazy because you don't want to sort of ruin the effect but just infill where you need to. but you can see how effective it is so that's it guys three ways of creating fur for your cakes i really hope you enjoyed that you got something out of it if you have any questions just hit me below um, and don't forget to subscribe as i say okay, we'd love to have you on board and so enjoy, enjoy the, the furriness. We uh, hope to see you soon. Bye.